RGB, 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 RGB. This chassis is already giving me the holiday feels. Hi guys, Matthew here and welcome back again to my channel. As you can see here right next to me, I have a chassis which is coming from Silentium PC and that's their Armis AR7X TG RGB model. And inside it, in there at the top, there's also a 280mm all-in-one water cooler, the Navis 280 RGB. Yes, more RGB. This time I'm jumping right into it. I'm trying out a new format, so to speak. I'm going to show you my building process of it, just so you can see how the assembly went. And after that, we will go through the chassis features, pros and cons. I should maybe think of a catchphrase if I make a series out of it. So, how was it? Well, pretty much as with any other well thought out chassis, the only thing that's different is that you will have to do a lot of fingerprint cleaning once you're done building, because there's a lot of glass. Overall, this model brings in that familiar and pretty well established look, which is roaming through the chassis industry for some time. Bottom line, they went for that clean and simple design, which is dominated by this tinted tempered glass on left and the front side panels. That left side panel can be easily pulled off in a pretty common manner by removing four corner thumb screws, while on the right side we have a classic metal panel held with two thumb screws on the back. 
Its design sort of falls into second plan once everything lights up, before all on account of those two main sides having see-through panels, so you can see all of the light show in full effect. Let's get back to the build itself. Inside of the chassis there's plenty of space and one thing that pops right out is the fact that we have this vertical mounting bracket for the GPU. Unfortunately you won't get a PCI Express extension cable with it also, but at least you have an option to do it. If you want to, you can of course remove this holding bracket so it doesn't spoil the view. As for what you can fit in here, length and height wise, you can put up to 420mm long graphics card and 178mm tall CPU air cooler, which is actually above average and that's because the Armis AR7X is about 10 to 30mm wider than your average ATX mid-tower chassis with 243mm of width in total. Around the motherboard tray you will find a total of 5 cutouts with rubber grommets for easier cable management and as you can notice they look to be pretty small, it wasn't easy to pass a 24 pin ATX power cable through it, but thankfully there's plenty of them, especially around the right edge of the motherboard, so you won't have to jam a lot of cables through one cutout. On the right of it we have this honeycomb mesh style grill onto which you can put up to 3 SSD drives mounted horizontally and you would probably want to if you have them because those hexagon like cutouts are pretty large and they're basically revealing any cables behind them although the right side panel blends them in a bit once you put it back on. On the back side you'll find a plenty of mounting points for the cable management, they will also provide you with few velcro ties, which is always appreciated over zip ties, although you will get those ones in the bundle too. Overall dealing with cables was very easy thanks to the ample room between the right side panel and the motherboard tray, although the LED RGB and fan control hub which comes with the chassis doesn't make that easy on account of a bunch of wires that go in and from it. What's also interesting is that you can put up to 3 SSD drives back here, each of them can be mounted onto two holes that go along the edge of the chassis frame, so they're sort of like dangling in the air. Speaking of the fans, you'll get a total of 4 of them pre-installed, all being 120mm RGB LED fans, but unfortunately they don't have a 4-pin PWM connector, nor you can control them via that mentioned hub, as it's not managed by an USB connection, so there's no software utility for it and no way to customize their speed as you can only control them using a dedicated switch on the front I.O. panel of the chassis, which has 3 levels of speed adjustment. I didn't use any of the usual 2.5 inch or 3.5 inch drives since I have a single NVMe M.2 drive on the motherboard for this system, but there's plenty of space for them in the chassis, besides those spots on the inside which I already mentioned. Behind the power supply shroud on the left side you will find a drive cage for 2.5 inch or 3.5 inch drives, which have these tooless trays that split apart so you can put a 3.5 inch drive in a matter of seconds. That cage can be completely removed by undoing few screws and with doing that you will get more room for managing the power supply cables or you can slide this modular part of the power supply shroud, even remove it completely if you plan to put a bigger radiator with a push-pull fan configuration on the front or maybe even mount a reservoir. On the other hand if you plan to keep it you can even put an additional 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch drive on top of it. On the power supply end of that shroud you can install basically any modern power supply model, there's plenty of room for the cables, even if you want to tuck in some extra, while they put a pretty thick rubber for it to sit on. On the other side of that we have 4 plastic feet for the chassis which have soft and grippy padding on them. In terms of what you can put in it when it comes to radiator and fan configuration, it's best described with this picture on their website. Bottom line, there's plenty of possibilities, from 120mm to up to 360mm setup choice. Of course, on each of those intake points you will get a dust filter, smaller ones on the side of the front panel for the intake fans, and a big magnet one on the top, and a smaller one on the back bottom for the power supply. Moving back to the outside of the chassis, on the top front part of it you can see an array of standard ports and switches, two USB 3.0 ports, audio jacks and power on switch, three step fan speed switch and an LED toggle switch for different RGB effects of the fans. Moving downward along the front glass panel, it doesn't seem like it can be removed separately, and it cannot, but it rather comes off together with that whole front panel cover, where you can then access those side fan filters and the fans itself. You've probably noticed that this bottom part of that front panel also mimics the top with this cutout portion and actually if you wish to you can swap the IO panel so it's placed on the bottom which makes it a bit more convenient for users who put their chassis on the table. 
coming down or up since I placed it on the top to the all-in-one water cooler itself, the installation of the Navis 280 RGB was as straightforward as it can be. As you've seen in the video, the chassis has plenty of room above the motherboard's top edge, nothing was in the way, so putting the 280mm radiator above it wasn't a problem. The socket bracket goes onto the water block and you can reuse AMD's socket backplate from the motherboard, so the only thing you need is a couple of standoffs and screws and you're done. As for the performance, here you can see a few video shots showing CPU's idle, stock and overclock temperatures and it seems like it wasn't an issue for it to cool off AMD's Ryzen 7 3700X. The idle temperature was pretty standard, anywhere in between 30 and 35 degrees Celsius, while the load stock temperature didn't surpass the 80 Celsius degrees mark, with the chassis fan speed being at low setting, which is actually pretty impressive. Overclocking the cores to 4.3 GHz and raising the voltage to 1.394 volts, the CPU temperature didn't went above 85 degrees Celsius, just with the occasional spike above it, which is much better to what I saw when I was comparing one of the top Noctua's and Be Quiet's air CPU coolers. Feel free to watch that later on, I'll put a link in the right top corner of this video. The whole thing was really quiet at idle, even the pump, and that's coming from me as I don't tend to prefer water coolers in general when it comes to their noise, just because it's hard to avoid those whining high-pitched noise which pumps can sometimes have, but this one was really quiet. This is even more impressive since we don't have any type of control for the pump, as it just powers over a single SATA power connector. Its other connector coming from it is for controlling the RGB lighting on it, and that's a standard 12V RGB header. The two 140mm fans that come with it have 4-pin PWM headers, you will get a wide splitter cable that's nicely braided, so you can connect them both onto a single fan header on the motherboard. They also have a 12V RGB header going from them, and in case your motherboard doesn't support that, you will get this handy inline controller for changing their lighting effects and color. They even have a split up connection if you want to put them together on a single header. Taking the all-in-one water cooler for a spin, under load we have quite a different story noise-wise, as the fans practically ramp up to their max speed, which makes it quite loud as you will hear later on. You can hear the air moving in the chassis, it has 5 fans working at all time after all, but it wasn't being loud in a way that I could say it bothered me, even at higher fan speed settings of the chassis and its fans, but on the other hand, as I said, the all-in-one water cooler was pretty loud under load, and this is something you should manually adjust through the motherboard's BIOS, since like this they ramp up pretty aggressively and probably a bit too high than they need to, as motherboard doesn't know what exact cooler is on it, so its default settings are not optimal for this setup, and I'm sure that with tweaking the fan curve by yourself, you can still achieve good results, but with a much lower noise floor. Here's a short sound clip of the chassis, how it sounds in few different load scenarios and fan speed, I will mark them all up so you can know which one is which, while also showing you the sound meter for a measurement comparison. Taking all into consider, from features, design and overall build quality, which was actually pretty decent, on par with others in this segment, there's nothing really major to complain about. The only real gripe I have with it is that the LED and fan hub controller doesn't have any means of controlling the fan speed over the motherboard, plus the fact that they use non-standard connections. As for the all-in-one water cooler, the same can be said for it. It's a really well-rounded model, which before all brings in a very good value when it comes to price to performance ratio, it's hard to beat it for around 60 euros. 
You see me mentioning euros and that's because they're both not that available, if at all, outside of the Europe, which doesn't go them in favor as they will have an even harder time dealing with their main rivals, especially since this chassis model has a price of around 100 euros, which puts him in the territory of a rather competitive segment. Nevertheless, competition is always a good thing to have, it drives the market and brands even further, and we, users, always benefit from it on the long run, being it with cool new products like these ones, or lower prices. That's it for this time from me, thank you once again for watching, please take a second to toss me a thumbs up if you enjoyed my content, that really helps a lot, and if you like what you saw, feel free to subscribe, and if you already are, be sure to press that notification bell down below, so you don't miss out on a new video, and until then, Catch you later, guys.